This is going to be a film study look and commentary on the Baltimore Ravens possibly signing Rock Yassin, a veteran cornerback from the Las Vegas Raiders. Prior to that, played with the Indianapolis Colts. For Ravens fans, he did not play in the epic 2021 win that Baltimore that the Ravens had in week four of 2021 when Lamar threw for like 440 yards and Calais Campbell blocked a field goal. Rock Yassin did not play in that game. Uh, also did not play excuse me, did play in the Ravens' win in 2020, I think, in Indianapolis. A couple of interesting points before we get started with the film. He's a left corner. He's a left outside corner. So, Rock Yassin signing this week uh, does a couple of things as it relates to the draft, but but it may actually signal that you know, there's no chance that Marcus Peters comes back. Marcus Peters is a left outside corner. Marlon Humphrey's a right, to, right outside corner, at least as they've been deployed since they were paired together uh, starting in 2019 when Marcus Peters was traded to Baltimore. Rock Yassin plays left outside corner. Now, you'll see a couple of snaps, I think, of him in the slot here in this film. I think I got 30 plays. And you'll see two, I think, from him playing right corner. But generally, that's where you can find him. I got two games of him from 2022 against the Jaguars in Week 9 and Arizona in Week 2. Again, playing for the Raiders last year. And then it'll be a brief look at him playing for the Colts in 2021 because I had film saved up of, of that game where the Rams, of course, the Rams won the Super Bowl that year against the Colts. He's a left corner. Uh, play One thing that I think is interesting to note, uh, plays split field quarters coverages very well. So what I'm talking about is pattern read coverages where you're matching the routes depending on how they develop post-snap, and you're not predetermining your area to cover. Uh, and that is something that Mike McDonald used a lot last year. Um, Edgar Allen, if I can get a chance to link it up here at this video at this timestamp, Edgar Allen did a video on <clears throat> – uh, split field coverages, really nicely done against the Bengals. So one thing, let's get to Rocky Sin. Pretty technical guy. I feel like his technique is very good. There are some reps of him playing press man on third down that, that look pretty high level. There's some instances of him playing man earlier in down, you know, earlier down sequences that don't look as good. Press man looks pretty good on third down. Off man uh, doesn't look as good. When I say off man, I mean three, four, five yards off, first and second down. Tackles better than I heard or I read, in my opinion. And again, I've got I've watched three games at this point, and this is all I'm going to put into this one. Way tougher than I was told. I read some uh, reviews or things that Raiders fans had to say. It was like the guy doesn't tackle, and then then the, then I actually read two content creators who said, you know, bring him back. And I agree. Watching their film. You know, the Week 2 game, Jonathan Abram is still there. Of course, they released him. And um, then they then they had Robertson, I think, playing nickel safety. They had issues covering the flats. And I did not think the issues were Rocky Sins, at least in the plays that I'm going to show you here. I've got, like I said, I've got 32 plays uh, queued up. I've got some um, annotations done for it. I'd like for you guys' feedback when, we, when I get done with this video, you let me know what you think. If you're seeing the same things I am, I didn't skip uh, big plays. To be honest with you, what knowing that he played on the left, what I generally did was on NFL.com is look for plays where it said throw short right, throw deep right, you know, stuff like that. Or I look for, obviously, situations where he made the tackle on a completed pass. I looked at third downs, ended up with 32 plays saved from those three games. Hopefully that's enough for, for me or you to uh, apply some type of designation to Rocky Sin if he is signed. As a side note, I really love uh, – finding new players to do film studies of. So if you have one that you'd like to recommend to me, let me know. All right, this is first possession Jacksonville week nine, a third and three. And um, the Raiders did this a lot where I would say they're asking him to shift to safety on this play. He's lined up at corner and then they're running Abrams out in the flat. Now that's where the route's taking him. Okay, so it's also possible that Abram is, and Rocky Sin are reading those two guys. I would say that it would be easy to say about Rocky Sin that he's too soft there. He's got too much depth. It, it would also be, and you're going to hear this multiple times in this video, second-level players for the Raiders staring at the quarterback with no awareness of the route. Now, I don't think this guy's going to be able to play this route and, and defend it. I think Rocky Sin probably is playing a little bit too far, but I think this is an example of them basically playing a cover-two look with a guy who's a corner. So lining him up at corner and then dropping him to a half-field alignment, and it, it pretty cleanly looks like five under to me 
with a four-man rush, I would call that cover two. Now, in this day and age with split field coverages and so many things being, quote, pattern read, or some people call it pattern match, whatever you want to call it, it's also possible that it's something else, and I'm not identifying it. <clears throat> All right, first and 10. Again, on the left-hand side of the defense, outside corner, serious stance. And this is something the Jaguars ran multiple times in this game. I had it four times in this game. Like basically um, a cur deep curl and a wheel. And you can see that Rockison is taking the wheel. He's concerned about the wheel, as he should be. He doesn't want to give that up. And just like on the last play where I think or I suspect that Rockison dropped a safety. I mean, look at this safety's depth, depth here. So that deeper curl. Very similar conceptually to the last play, except it's, you know, deeper down the field and the quarterback had the ball in his hand a lot longer. So it was a, a longer developing play. But you can see what I'm talking about. Off coverage. Guys being off. Rocky Sin is, is carrying the wheel and it looks like this guy's sitting it down. I think that's the tight end Ingram, but I might be wrong. And then Christian Kirk with a nice catch. All right, going to skip ahead to the third possession. And look at the stance, you know, very serious stance, very serious guy, serious about communicating pre-snap. You see it a lot off coverage, and you're going to see two examples of this, I think, on this possession where the stop route is just wide open. But Rocky Sin is doing what a lot of corners are doing now, what they're asked to do, which is, you know, and Richard Sherman's talked about this multiple times, is back or butt, you know, to the sideline, you know, eyes on the quarterback, but also trying to be able to keep some awareness of the route as it develops. This is just a quick little stop route on first and 10, five-yard gain, six-yard gain, something like that. A lot more physical player than I was told, and you see a little bit of example of it there. Third and four, he's going to cover Evan, Evan Ingram, and I think this is a zone. It certainly looks like man. I think it's the same coverage I showed you to the other side. So what I mean is this corner here I think is bailing, and this corner here is is going there. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a classic two, cover two, you know, but there definitely seems to be zone drops here by these three guys. And this guy's dropping out to the flats the same way Abram did on the first play that I showed you. It's just basically a mirror image. Why am I saying that to you? Well, if this is man and <clears throat> Rocky Sin is that far separated from Evan Ingram, then the Ravens should not be signing him. That's why I brought that up. That's why I brought that up, that I think this is zone. Ball is thrown behind him. I think that Ro Robertson or Robertson, however you say it, again is another example of a second-level Raiders defender having too heavy eyes on the quarterback. Now, in this case, he is looking out at the receiver. and then, But once he gets locked back on the quarterback, that's it. I think he's too far in in this direction, creating this hole, this gap between him and um, Rocky Sin. I don't think that's man. I don't think that on a third and four, Rocky Sin um, can't cover Evan Ingram in a situation like that. And I think film that I'll show you later on will support that. All right, fourth possession. This is a 12-play drive <clears throat> for the Jaguars. Ends up being a touchdown. This third play of the drive, you're going to get a deep snag and a wheel or a potential wheel by the inside receiver, I should say. And you're going to just check out the zone mentality that Rocky Sin has. But his eyes are on the quarterback the whole time. This is what a lot of corners are asked to do. Look at his eyes. They're on the, on the quarterback the whole time, but he can see the routes. Now, he does shift his gaze to the, uh, the deep snag or deep curl route by Christian Kirk. So he's going to get his eyes on this route eventually. And I think this is one of the reasons why Jonathan Abram was, was let go. Just a little lazy in this coverage, um, allowing this ball to be complete. I mean, look at the line between Trevor Lawrence and the intended receiver, which is Jones, Zay Jones. Thrown over the top of Abrams. Just doesn't have enough depth, if you ask me. Not Rocky Sin's fault. But I like his technique there. You know, able to handle the, the deep curl, or at least be on the outside of it. And, and again, look how deep the safety is. I mean, their safeties are incredibly deep for being a first and 10. Look at the differential that you've got between the receiver and that safety. Rocky Sin's kind of like in a... In between a rock and a hard place, he can't he can't play both of those routes. I don't think he's expected to, to be honest with you. All right, five plays later, he had not been targeted here. This is a run concept. There's Rocky Sin, top side of the screen, left hand side of the defense. Etienne almost scores here, gets involved in the tackle. Like I said, I I see him being more active in the run game than I was led to believe. And some of the things I read tonight, I finally decided to you know conduct this and get this done tonight. So sat down for two or three hours and read some things, watched some film. Etienne scored on the next play, by the way. There. 
All right, fifth possession moving forward, and this is just an example of the off coverage that the Raiders had for whatever reason, uh, giving up stop routes consistently in this game. First and 10. Now, he's not targeted here, but I'm showing you both sides of the field. Look at, you know, you could complete the stop route to either side at this point. Rakyasin's reaction is a little bit quicker than the other corner, but in any case, it's a completion down there. Skipping ahead to the second half here, third, third quarter, sixth possession of the game. You're going to have a completion to uh, Christian Kirk and a nice tackle by Rakyasin. I think he's a better tackler than people give him credit for. You're getting two guys release out. Christian Kirk is releasing out. Looks to me like you've got some type of um, <clears throat> half field coverage here. And I, so is he responsible for the flats? Is it quarter, quarter, half? And he's supposed to be a little deeper with the nickel, in this case 21, responsible for the flats. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I just know it's an example of uh, him coming up and making a tackle. He looks pretty pissed off. And there's no communication between him and 21 post-snap. So it doesn't look like there was a mistake by uh, 21 there, even though I would like to see him expand a little bit further. All right, so the bunch stuff, the Jaguars have been doing a lot. Try to take advantage of some of the off coverages, and they do it here. You get a bubble screen out of 13 personnel. This is to the uh, tight end, Ingram, very talented. And you can see Rocky Sin trying to deal with a tight end out there, stalk blocking him. Just trying to force the ball inside to Perryman, who I think has since signed with the um, Houston Texans. It's interesting, the Raiders did not play good defense last year, but a handful of guys from their team have moved on to other other teams that are going to be successful. Four plays later, second and goal, you're going to get a touchdown pass to Christian Kirk. It wins quite easily. Rock Yassin is guarding Marvin Jones there on what would have been a little whip route or China out, I guess. Changes directions well. That step is kind of big, if you ask me. It's That's a little abnormal for what I've seen from him. I think Marvin Jones would have probably been open and available for the football if um, if he'd been targeted, but Rockison probably have opportunity to make the tackle. Okay, moving backwards here. That was week 9, 2022. This is week 2, 2022. This is an interesting game. The Raiders shut out Arizona in the first half, 20 to nothing. Eventually lost 29-23. I wanted to look at this one because, well, Rockison played 100% of the snaps in this game. It's a sack by um, Crosby. I think it's a cover three. Cover three where you got Dortch. I think it's Dortch going out into the flats. You know, one vertical here. And then, you know, possibly, possibility of another vertical to the other side. So I think you get four underneath droppers and, and you know, two corners who recognize there's no other threat so they can squeeze a little bit. You know, cover three doesn't necessarily look like these guys being in between the hash and the top of the numbers. It's not typical. You would typically have them outside the bottom of the numbers because you'd have some routes out there where there are none. That's the reason why I'm mentioning this play. I don't think that Rocky Asin is a guy who's going to guard grass. I think he's a guy who's going to guard people regardless of what the coverage is called. All right, very next play, third and 14. I like this one. Uh, actually, um, my apologies. This has nothing to do with him. Shouldn't have even recorded that play. Moving on, third possession. He's on the other side of the field playing man, and I think he generally does a good job in these situations. They moved him to the other side, ran a wheel route from the backfield with Connor, ends up being incomplete. Again, they were targeting uh, Jonathan Abrams there. Opportunity for him to get the football, if you ask me. Connor's got him beat. Good coverage uh, by Rocky Sin on, I think that's Dortch. Same possession. Going to be an interception that's called back for a defensive pass interference. He's going to end up getting a press man, I believe, on third down. And this is where I say I think he does a pretty good job in these situations. Now, you can talk about who he's guarding. He, you know, he's not guarding Marquise Brown there. Marquise Brown's up on the other side of the field being interfered with and just out physical, but he was grabbed and held. So this right that's happening right here. But the good coverage by Rock is in is happening at the bottom of the screen. I think he's a pretty good player, guys. You can probably sell from, you know, just me talking about it at this point. This is going to be commentary from this forward. I absolutely would like Marcus Peters to be back on this football team. If you had to choose between Rock Yassin and Marcus Peters, like I'm I'm going with you know, Marcus Peters every time, for real. This is three plays later, another interception. I think this is a very similar coverage to the one I talked about. I think the first play I showed you, maybe it was the second play, where he's basically rolling to safety, and they're playing a cover two. So he provides some versatility here, if you ask me, and I think that might be one of the reasons why um, Baltimore's looking at him. He's lined up at corner. You know, he's lined up at corner. There's the nickel. You know, you've got another outside corner here, a, a free safety. 
And then, you know, some, it looks like a, another, you know, a dime backer or something like that lined up in the box. But he's going to roll to safety. I mean, this looks like cover two to me, where you've got, you know, a half field safety here, and then Rakusin is a half field safety there. You got an underneath guy in the flats who I think is Robertson. I think he just loses. I think he's got a tendency to just stare at the quarterback. Now he gets an interception here, you know, because there's pressure on the quarterback, but you can see that there is a player who is wide open. And in a cover two, there's just no way for um, Rocky Asin to cover number one receiver running some type of vertical, ending up going vertical, and then a second receiver. He's got to know that the second guy threw from the inside. If he goes vertical, i got to take him. I can't leave him. But he gets rewarded for it. He gets an interception because there's pressure on the quarterback because, you know, pressure causes difficulty with um, quarterback efficiency. So another press man situation, I think A.J. Green on the third down. A.J. Green did win two reps against him, I thought in this game um, on press man. That was not one of them right there, obviously. Does a pretty good job. I know A.J. Green is older and you know beyond his prime. But the, the connection to the receiver in press man, particularly on third downs, I think is pretty obvious. All right, down in the goal line, it's a touchdown pass um, in the slot here. And again, it's going to be the same story that I've talked about multiple times. Nickel defender for the Raiders has just got his eyes too heavy on the quarterback with no connection to the route. Rock is in on the other hand, is a guy who can keep his eyes on the quarterback, in my opinion. Look at him jump and then keep eyes inside. It's basically cover two down here in the goal line, which is not, you know, it's not uncommon. But this is a guy who's got tremendous awareness, keeping his eyes on the quarterback and covering athletic guys out here versus, again, a consistent problem that I've noticed just in the two games I watched from 2022. With Abrams and 21, eyes on the quarterback, Unable to adjust to the route. Easy touchdown in the second half. Helped Arizona come back and basically steal this game. Uh, Rockus in. Doesn't have negative body language, though. He's just trying to keep the guy. It sounds like he's trying to keep the guy positive. I love his game. Uh, were he to be the substitute or the guy that takes the place of Marcus Peters, I would be happy with what we have. I'm not going to lie. I would be upset that Marcus Peters isn't there. But the salary differential, I would guess, is probably going to be pretty significant, at least what Marcus Peters wants. This looks like it should be called complete. It was ruled incomplete. This is the, one of the ones that A.J. Green won on Rakiasin. You can see he gets him kind of cross-stepped. Rakiasin does this kind of like uh, when he's playing press man, stutter back and forth sometimes, kind of like sway left and right a little bit. He doesn't do, really do it here. But anyway... That's an example of him losing a press man route. <laughs> Let's move forward into the game a little bit. We'll let you guys make your own evaluations. I've already made mine at this point. I think he would start at left corner for the Ravens. I think he's more talented than Brandon Stevens. I think he's more talented than Pepe Williams. Quarterback hit on an incomplete pass to um, Zach Ertz from the other side of the field. He's reading A.J. Green because that's the guy he's assigned to on the outside. You'll see him here, spot shadowed in a moment. He's going to come into your picture. You can see he's reading A.J. Green. And then once he recognizes A.J. Green, everybody else is just blocking down. He thinks it's run. Oop, got to redirect. Hits the quarterback a little late. Yes, it was only one step. <laughs> Big break for this guy, right? I mean, getting undercut like that, pretty, ter pretty terrible to have his back turned. Forced to have his back turned by the NFL player run right into him. Sucks. All right, moving on. Get some 2021 film going here. Actually, this is the last play. I'm sorry. Actually, really got to show this one. It's a second and long, an example of him settling his feet. Watching the quarterback, taking the vertical route, and then redirecting when the ball's thrown. That's exactly what the Ravens are going to ask corners to do in their quarter split field coverages. Now, if this is, you know, to read, whatever people want to call it, where, you know, two goes out, he's going to jump it and take it. It could be, but I don't think it is because he's not jumping it so quickly. <clears throat> he's actually carrying the vertical first because he's got eyes on the quarterback, but he's feeling the route. He knows the concept. Smart football player. Should have said that already. Uh, knows the concept, understands concepts, <clears throat> gets his feet settled, comes downhill, makes the tackle. I have no idea what the salary structure would look like. The Ravens don't have much, period, at this point, with the situation between you know them and Lamar trying to hold money in case a team offers him. I don't think that's going to happen until after the draft. I've gone on record as saying that. 
a couple of times. All right. 2021 film against the Rams, week two. I'm going to let some of it run. A lot, of, a lot of reps here against Robert Woods, who's since moved on. I guess he's two teams moved, removed from the uh, Rams situation. He understands concepts. Watch him sift this out. Now, this is poor awareness by the Colts defense. They're playing zone here. That's Cooper Cup in the backfield. You probably saw this um, already. Touchdown where he jukes, I think, more. I think that's more, maybe not. But poor awareness by them. But we're interested in um, Rock Yassin. So watch him just sift through this pick you know, fade by Robert Woods and stay connected to the running back. You could tell that it was going to be zone because the running back is out there as the number one receiver. And Rock is in the outside corner, still lined up over top of it. Athletic, smart, plays multiple coverages across the two systems I've seen here. Uh, I haven't seen him get beat for big plays, guys. I just, I haven't. A.J. Green did have that big catch down the sideline that was ruled incomplete. I do like his change of direction. This is the least efficient move that I've seen him have right here. As Woods is taking this route vertical, and actually it's Vaughn Jefferson, my bad, and then brings it back. That's the least efficient body movement that I've seen Rock Yassin make. Six foot tall, 195, something like that. I wouldn't say he's a supreme athlete in the NFL. I mean, he's a supreme athlete for the for human beings across the world. But in the NFL, I think there's other guys that are better, quote, athletes than him. I really like his game. I think he's tougher, better tackler than he gets credit for. I think he fits in the Ravens' system um, very acutely. High level of awareness. During the play, you can see that he's playing Robert Woods' man again. So you might say, well, it's a reverse to Woods. I mean, he's just running with Woods. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true, and he gets involved in the play. But this is Cooper Cup running out into the flats. It would be very easy for anyone, 2021, 2022, or even 2023, to let their eyes get averted to Cooper Cup because he's such a devastating athlete, such a devastating player. Nope. Rocky Sin is disciplined, if you ask me. I think he's focused and locked in on his job. If this is the guy that we get from the film that I watched, again, I watched three games. I watched every defensive snap because he played 100% of the snaps. I wasn't going to waste time and watch. I think there was a game against the Chiefs this year, maybe, where he played 53% of the snaps. I wasn't going to watch that, and 47% of my this plays I watched not involve him. All right, last couple of plays. I actually like this one, him lined up at nickel, zoning off in a cover two. And then watch how he reacts to the quarterback. When the quarterback points, he gets in the window. I mean, I'm interested there. It looks like a guy who provides some versatility. Look, Kyle Hamilton can play nickel corner. We know that, or nickel safety. Pepe Williams provides a lot of versatility in there. I don't think Pepe is a great uh, man defender on slots, and particularly not on tight ends. But this is another guy who would provide <clears throat> real depth to the DB core, who can play press man on third down, who appears very smart and locked in on every technique. Uh, I like his game, and this is what I really enjoy about being a content creator at this point, is Rock Yassin is a guy who I knew next to nothing about uh, probably six hours ago, something like that. And then finalized, watch, saw a couple people on Twitter, I think it was Cole Jackson and somebody else mentioned you know him probably signing this week, and I thought, you know what, maybe I better get on top of this. Do a video now, you know, and if he... If it gets signed, then I'll be able to retweet it a second time. So you guys let me know what you think. I know this one went way longer than I thought. I, I enjoy trying to show respect to NFL players who's who I didn't know a damn thing about before I started the process. It just confirms for me that there's a lot that I don't know. You know, there's a lot that we all don't know, and um, and I learned as I watched some of the film, and I learned that Rocky Sin looks like a technician. He looks like a guy that could be a coach. Uh, years from now, because he seems locked in. He seems to communicate pre-snap with the safety, provides some versatility, does a pretty damn good job in press man on third downs. 
uh, quarter split field reads. Looks like he's very well versed in those situations. I think scheme wise, he's a good fit for the Ravens. Salary structure is going to be the only issue. If the salary structure fits with the Ravens not having a whole hell of a lot to offer at this point, as it stands, you know, late March 2023, then it may not work out. Brock Yassin, I don't know that he's going to be a guy who's going to draw a huge salary one month before a draft that has possibly a historic number of corners who could play on day one in the NFL. That's why in Rockus, if I was a person advising Rockus in or had any relationship with him, I'd say, hey, let's get ahead of this thing, man, because, you know, after the draft, teams, yeah, there might be a couple of teams who didn't get the corner they wanted from the draft, but it's also possible that 24, 26 of the teams drafted corners or nickels or safeties that they wanted, and and you're left out. Like, let's get you, let's get you in, in the building now, and let's get started. Let's get a one month head start on some of those talented rookies that are going to come in, you know, uh, with a great reputation and, and possibly a high salary or high signing bonus. And uh, I think Rocky sends a starter for the Ravens next year, unless, you know, a guy at 22 like a Joey Porter is there who played left corner for Penn State all year in 2021 and 2022, or someone of that caliber. Devin Witherspoon happens, to, some crazy scenario happens to be there. I don't think Porter will be either. My point is, Rock sin has got a great opportunity here in Baltimore, and I think the Ravens, if they can't bring Marcus Peters in, this is a pretty damn good look. You guys let me know what you think of that thought and the video in the comment section.